Hey, hey, party people. In this video, I'm gonna discuss choosing a color story for your fashion collection. Specifically, I'm going to, one, go over several methods to develop your color story, two, list factors you have to consider when developing your color story, and three, answer the number one question people ask me about color stories. First up, methods to develop color stories. In the industry, large to medium-sized companies often use trend forecasting, color forecasting services to help them. Most smaller businesses can't afford or don't want to use these services. Okay? One method is to pull colors from an image or a couple of images. These images can be from your sketchbook development or your mood board. You know, I would only pick like a couple of images at most. Otherwise, you just get too many colors a lot of the time. One method I like is to choose a work of art that your customer would enjoy. Remember, all design decisions go back to your customer, your muse, and your brand. Listen, if Raf Simone can get fired from Calvin Klein for not designing for the customer, so can you. Anyway, this work of art can be a painting, a photograph, a sculpture, or even a building. Pull colors from this painting to create your color story. If you watched the colors and textures video from my fashion design process series, then you know that I was inspired by extraordinary chickens. And that whole thing has become this long running inside joke between me and long time viewers of my channel. And, uh, yeah, there was this amazing photo of different colored chicken eggs in the Extraordinary Chickens book, and that was the inspiration for my color story. And then, yeah, sometimes you'll have to take an image and round things out by adding an extra neutral or adding an extra pop color, but you can start from that work of art. The piece of art has to relate to your customer. It should be something that your customer would enjoy looking at would enjoy having a print of in their home or maybe even the original, something like that. Okay, it all has to relate. In this example, let's pretend my customer is in her 30s and 40s. She lives in a big city. She wants an urban uniform without relying on too much black. She likes to look polished without thinking too hard about it every morning. You know, everything should go with everything else. And uh, she travels a lot for work, so she likes the core of her wardrobe to all coordinate with each other for fast and easy packing. I chose the Mona Lisa as my color inspiration. It's dark, it's moody, it's subtle, it's a little mysterious, and it looks like there can be a lot of different but cohesive, harmonious color stories. There's a lot of greens, a lot of browns and oranges, golds, and some lighter blues in the background. Color stories should have a balance of colors and neutrals. Colors should tell the story of the mood of the collection, and then the neutrals sell. I mean, let's be real, the neutrals will most often sell the higher quantities. Okay. Color stories should have a balance of light, medium, and dark colors. I say the word balance because creating a color story is not math, okay? There's no one formula that suits everyone. You have to think about whether or not your customer wears a lot of color, whether they wear a lot of dark colors, or maybe your customer loves pastel colors. Maybe they love acidic tones. Again, back to what your customer wants. Another method is to visit your fabric sources and look through their prints. And you may come across a print that is perfect for your collection's direction that season. And you can pull colors from the print to create your color story. Design companies do this all the time. Pull colors from a print or recolor a print to match their color story so that everything works together. And honestly, you don't even have to use the print. You can just use it solely as color inspiration because I like the colors of this print, but I don't love the print. Another method is to start with a color that you're really feeling and you think will be hot in the near future and start playing with color schemes. Okay, I have a whole color lessons playlist 
where I go over what complementary, split complementary, monochromatic, analogous, and triad color schemes are. And remember, these color schemes are not limited to bright red and bright green as the complement. And, you know, the red and the green complementary color scheme can actually be a rich, deep burgundy and a soft grayish green, rounded out with a winter white and a charcoal gray, okay? And it's not about the bright, the raw color on the color wheel. And some students think that these kind of standard color schemes are too basic to be used in high fashion, but they could not be more wrong. I screen grabbed these from Vogue.com. This is the Spring 2019 Couture Collection from Zuhair Murad. Apologies if I pronounce that terribly. And this collection uses a beautiful analogous color scheme, which analogous means neighboring colors on the color wheel. And we have a blue, green, blue, blue, violet, violet, red, violet color scheme. And some of the colors are the pastel version. Some of them are the really bright, saturated versions of the color, but it is an analogous color scheme. Here's Gian Battista Valli, and Valli uses another analogous color scheme. A lot of black, a lot of white, for sure, but then also a lot of red and a lot of red-violet which translates to these beautiful, bright pinks. Here's Zero Plus Maria Corneo, and this collection showcases a complementary color scheme with a soft blue and some bright oranges and some neutral tones like white and camel. This is Marnie, and Marnie, I mean, this collection has a lot of colors, but the main colors are your primary triad, red, yellow, and blue. And, you know, there in the prints, there are little bits of other colors, but the dominant colors are red, yellow, blue, and tons of white. Here's Dries Van Noten, spring 2019, ready to wear, and this beautiful analogous color scheme is yellow, green, blue, orange, and then round it out with a lot of white and a lot of black. And in this case, he's using the really rich, raw, saturated versions of these colors, but also with some bits of navy, okay, an extra neutral, some olive green, okay, but it's a very bright, colorful spring collection. And here's Isabel Morant, who is using a complementary color scheme in a very muted, soft, subtle way. You've got red-orange and blue-green. And the blue-green has been muted a lot, and it has a lot, it's, ba it's barely a tinted blue, and then a lot of muted red-orange melony tones with white and black and the metallic version of red orange to round it out. So yeah, a lot of big time designers showing at the main fashion weeks are using these academic color schemes as a jump point for them. And so, hey, if it's good enough for them, it should be good enough for you too. <laughs> Another method is to check out websites that put together color stories like designseeds.com. And there are actually a lot of uh, websites that do similar things. And these websites, they're not built for one particular industry. You could take these color stories and apply them to home decor, apply them to an illustration, apply them to a fashion collection. And a lot of these also follow many of the kind of standard, you know, complementary, analogous, split com, triad kind of color stories. Here's an analogous color story with blue greens and blues and violets. Here is a complementary color scheme using very muted gold and violet, yellow and purple, but muted. Here's another complementary story, red and green, but now it's pink and like duller sager greens and some neutrals, okay, and so forth. 
and so forth. Now let's talk about some of the factors to consider when putting together your color story. Number one, as always, what your customer wears. This is always the number one factor. What's daring and bold for one kind of customer can be quite boring for another. Uncle Carl would never do a Chanel collection without some black and white, without a little black dress, without some tweed. Valentino has long been known for Valentino Red. And so even now, when Valentino is no longer there, it's so part of the heritage that every designer who works at Valentino remembers to include the Valentino Red. Even if your company doesn't have a specific signature color, always think about what your customer expects from you, your brand. Number two, what season are you designing for? Okay, you want something fresh for spring, something rich and warm looking for fall, something chic and nautical for resort, things like that. And yeah, I highly encourage you to look at the collections of designers you admire, designers who kind of have a similar style as you, and see how they approach color stories. Three. Another factor you have to consider is what item category you're designing, especially now where a lot of these single item category companies are really flourishing. Okay? And, you know, do you wear the same colors, lingerie, as you do parkas? Okay? Obviously, there's going to be some overlap, but for the most part, they run different color stories. You know, orange is definitely one of those colors where you have to kind of be careful about the placement. <laughs> Number four, another factor is in the industry, you must offer every style in multiple colors. It is a complete waste of money spent on developing the sample and perfecting the fit to offer something in one color and lose out on all the potential sales from people who might just not love that specific color that you offer it in. Okay. Even wedding gowns come in different shades of white. Okay. The only exception, I think, is black. Like Black is so uh, such a big seller, you can get away with offering just black in a style. And you may think, you know, Zoe, I go to Nordstrom and I see lots of stuff selling in one color. Yeah, just because a designer offers three colors doesn't mean that the store is going to order all the colors. Like Nordstrom may order the pink one that you sell, and then a different boutique might order the blue version of that style. Number four, use a bit of color psychology to convey your mood and message. You do not need to overthink this. Okay? Bright yellows convey sunshine and happiness and pale lilac is pretty and light and soft and using a lot of dull grays and browns can showcase a rather somber mood. So when you're putting your color stories together, think about the mood you're trying to convey and what colors help illustrate that mood. Number six. And this is going to be the most important one in terms of fashion business is you will often choose colors and fabrics at the same time simply because of sourcing logistics. You will sometimes be limited by what's available at your price point and whether or not you can hit the minimums of the fabric wholesaler. If you can meet the minimums and you have the time to do it, you can get a fabric custom dyed, okay? Anyways, always keep in mind that colors will look a little bit different depending on the texture as well, okay? So merging all these factors together, using the Mona Lisa sample from earlier, we've got our customer, we've got our season, which is fall. We're doing blouses and pants and coats, okay? I want to pick a couple of blouse fabrics, a couple of pant fabrics, and maybe one coating, or maybe two. I have my approximate color story that I want here, and you can, you know, tape these chips onto a piece of paper and take them to your fabric person, and you start looking for your fabrics, and you see what's available, because 
I don't know about you, but it's so much easier and cheaper to go with what's available in stock before you start asking for dye to match things. So you start looking at what's available, what's cool, what basically follows the color story you have laid out, and you just start building your fabric stories with your color story and some of the colors might change a little bit and you might find out that you like the new color story better. Now let's answer the most frequently asked question about color. How many colors should be in one collection? In the industry, in business, and this is important because fashion is the intersection of creativity and commerce. The number of colors you have in a collection is all about the fabrics you have in a collection, which is dictated by the size of your company, the size of your collection, and what order minimums you can fulfill. You can learn more about fabrics in the fabrics playlist, which I'll link in the description box. And I already know that there's so many of you watching right now who hate this answer. You want me to tell you an, a, a number. Only have six colors for every collection, everybody. Yeah, that's not how things work, okay? There's so many different kinds of fashion companies out there. And even for all, let's pretend 100% of you watching this video are doing startups. There's so many different kinds of startups, okay? So you do have to consider, you know, what are the minimums of the places that I'm sourcing? You know, how many items categories? Like, am I doing just bras? Or am I doing hoodies and jackets and parkas? Or am I, do you know, you have to think about all these factors that I just listed. Sourcing is a headache. It's a big deal. And minimums, especially for startups, is a huge deal. Why do you think I was so excited to introduce y'all to Swatch On? And... You know, I kept talking up really excitedly about how Swatch On has no minimums and it's, it's rare. You know, there are a ton of companies out there that will do a hundred yard minimum, a thousand yard minimum. You know, some people they'll say your minimum is one piece and by one piece, they don't mean one yard. They mean one roll and it can be anywhere from 50 to a hundred yards in that roll. So you have to ask them how many yards are in a piece. And you might think, Zoe... Am I going to look amateur and small if I have a narrow color story? No. Okay. Even well-known big labels will showcase a narrow color story because it looks good. It looks cohesive and it really communicates their aesthetic message that season. This Hermes collection has a great complementary color scheme using orange and blue, but not raw orange and blue, but definitely more subtle and sophisticated versions of those colors, which is very much their brand. Okay, And they've got this little hits of red and green, which is another complementary pair. And this McQueen collection using a primary triad with red, yellow, and blue. And, you know, you see some bits of other collections in the prints and embroideries. But red, yellow, blue with black, white, and gray, that's their color story. And let's be real. McQueen and Hermes are huge brands. But, you know, they chose these focused color stories. So if they can make it look good, so can you. And that's it for today on color stories and how to put them together. Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new today. Share, subscribe, drop your questions in the comments section. Check the description box to links to all my shenanigans, links to videos related to this one. And, you know, you may think that putting together color stories is difficult with all the factors involved. But unless you're new to my channel, you know what I'm going to say. Hashtag always be practicing. Hashtag practice, not magic, because we are made of practice, not magic. And hashtag if your first one sucks, you're right on track. What does that hashtag mean? It means a lot of people are so afraid to do something that they never get around to doing even the first one. So if you try it, if you do the first one, you're on track. You've gotten started. Have fun practicing putting together color stories. Go look up some runway shows and lookbooks of your favorite designers and analyze their color stories. And I'll see you in the next video.